let's talk a little bit about common questions people have about matte painting because I think it's quite a VFX discipline that is still a little bit misunderstood by many people and it probably comes simply from the fact that is a discipline that does require a lot of different skills and knowledge and softwares as I said and it's a uh, Matte painting can be applied in many situations, many really different situations. You have plenty of different workflows. So let's just first um, ask the question, what is matte painting? So if you take a look at the Wikipedia definition, so matte painting is a painted representation of a landscape, set or distant location that allows filmmakers to create the illusion of an environment that is not present at the filming location. So even though the techniques and the tools have changed a lot over the years, I think that in essence matte painting is still this, it's still about giving the illusion of something that is not there, uh, an environment. So uh, it's it's really still what it is I think, it's just that the tools have changed a lot. So what does that mean now um, in the real world, in the real VFX world these days? Well it can be a lot of things, it can be simply replacing a sky. It can be doing a paint over of a CG render of just a frame, like to maybe clean a plate, to remove cars, something like that. Or it can be like an entire um, environment, an establishing shot. And this is what we're going to focus on in this course, actually. And in order to cl clarify a little bit what is matte painting, we can talk a little bit about what are the general skills and softwares required in matte painting. So when it comes to skills, I think uh, one of the most basic skills is obviously digital painting, even though a lot of stuff is CG or photo manipulation, the basic skill of digital painting is still very valuable, I think. And uh, along with that comes photo manipulation, obviously. Um, I mean, I think you have different kinds of matte painters in the industry. You obviously have people who can do a bit of everything, and that's what I'm going to try to cover in this course. But you, there seems to be guys who are more, mostly focused on doing like 2D images using photos and painting, while you have the matte painters or who are more on the technical side of things, I guess, who are more about really CG scans, really all the the more advanced technical stuff. And um, but as I said in this course, I'm gonna try to cover a little bit of everything, but I'll talk about that later. So digital painting, photo manipulation, obviously 3D. That is the other really big part of what matte painting is today. So 3D modeling, texturing and rendering. Then you have camera projections, which is really, really important. In my opinion, that is really what makes matte painting really efficient. And um, it's the big advantage that has matte painting over, for example, purely CG environments. Camera projections, I'll talk about that later. But in essence, it's um, what allows you to transform a 2D flat image into like a moving environment. So it creates parallax by projecting the 2D images onto basic geometry. And that allows you to animate a camera and create an illusion of a, of a 3D environment, even though the image is 2D. But don't worry if you don't understand all this stuff yet that well. We'll cover that later. So compositing, obviously. If you're able to comp your own shop, it's going to be much easier and it's probably going to look better because what people want when they use matte painters, in my opinion, or in general in the VFX pipelines, I, th I, th I think we always tend to um, give as much ownership as possible of the shot to one artist and that just allows the, the show and the shot to be much more consistent, I think. So if you're able to comp your own shot, it's going to be better for everybody. Then you have, I would say, more minor skills, but are that are still getting more and more important, like photogrammetry and photography. Um, now, when it comes to the softwares that are used, I would say it really depends on which uh, in which VFX studio you're working in. And if you work freelance, you can basically use pretty much whatever you want, I think. But let's start with like the main modeling packages. I would say Maya for sure is still the industry standard. But it can also be 3ds Max, depending on the studio, in the studio you are in. So it really depends. Uh, I think any 3D software could do the job, really. Then you have obviously Mari. Uh, Mari is like a texturing software. I'm not going to use it in this particular software because I think now we have other really cool tools that are developed to do like some pretty advanced procedural texturing, and this is more what I'm going to focus on. 
But Mary is definitely uh, a software that is used quite a lot. Then you have Photoshop, obviously, one of the most important software. So still a lot of stuff is happening in Photoshop. Then you have Nuke. So Nuke is the compositing software. That's the software in which we're also going to do the projections. So really important softwares. You can also use something like Fusion. It's pretty much the same. It's just that Nuke is still the industry standard, I think. Then you have speed tree that I use for any type of vegetation tree, so really useful. I'm not a super advanced user, and it's not a software that is used all the time, but it's still a really important one, I think. Then you have the render engines. So in my case, when I am at home, I use Redshift because Redshift is GPU rendering, meaning that it's going to be using uh, your GPU card, and I and it's really fast that's the really main advantage of it so it can be faster for cheaper that being said in-house i think most of the time in the big vfx studios it's either arnold or v-ray sometimes also render man i think but i think once you know one of those render engines you can use pretty much any of them so in this course i'm gonna use redshift but you can use pretty much whatever you want i think then you have zbrush so it can be ZBrush or uh, Mudbox, even 3D Code probably, doesn't really matter. Just a sculpting software. Once again, ZBrush is pretty much a standard, I think. Then you have World Machine or Terragen. So those are the softwares I use to create terrains. You can use, once again, whatever you want. I think you also have now Gaia that just came out. You also have World Creator. I personally have not used it. Uh, it's pretty much up to you. So in this case, I'm going to use World Machine. Then you have really a bunch of smaller softwares like Photoscan, all types of plugins. I should also mention uh, Houdini that is used more and more. Houdini is like some kind of super software that really you can do anything in Houdini. I personally haven't gotten yet that much into it, but when I see the way it's, it's going right now, I feel like it's going to be more and more standard to be able to use Houdini, at least to some extent. Um, I could also add Clarice, especially for environments. So Clarice is a scene assembly software. It is used more and more in, in big studios and also smaller studios to really create those large scale environments. So um, those are scene assembly software. So those are not the softwares in which you would model, for example. It's just a scene assembly software. And uh, during the next chapter, I'll try to show a few shots for which they use Clarice. And all that brings me now to the different types of workflow in which you're going to use all those softwares. So this is not like an absolute truth. I guess there are other workflows that exist or other versions of those workflows. So I just try to keep things simple. So first you would have, for example, the Photoshop only workflow. So this is typically the most simple workflow. In this case, to sum it all up, you would receive as a matte painter the plate or a CG render, so just a frame. And you would only work inside of Photoshop. You would either like paint on top of the plate or the 3D render or just do some minor corrections and you would send that back to comp. So for example, it could be um, just simply cleaning up a plate. So in the live action show, so film, TV show, whatever, you would receive one frame and you would be asked to, for example, replace the sky. Or you, or you would be asked maybe to simply uh, erase a few cars or whatever just to do some small retouching. Or it can be like we do a lot of DAXs. You receive a CG render and you just need to do how we call it a loft pass on top of it. So just adding a little bit of details that would take just really a long time to add into CG. So it can be used for a, a lot of other different situations. But this is just to give you an example. Then you would have what I call the Photoshop plus new workflow, so slightly more complex. So once again, sum it all up. In this case, as a matte painter, you would receive the layout plus the shot cam plus the projection cameras. So the layout, to keep it simple, is a 3D scene in which you have your basic representation of your scene uh, along with the shot cam. And in this case, also the projection camera. So what you would do in this workflow as a matte painter is go inside of Photoshop and paint those projection images using mostly then 2D, uh, possibly with some 3D base, depends on you, but mostly 2D. Then you would project those images inside of Nuke and you would deliver like a P comp, final comp, or um, a new, uh, or a sequence, sorry, so like um, the final sequence, the image sequence. 
Then we have the 3D plus 2D workflow. So in this case, once again, as a matte painter, you would receive the layout plus the shot cam as, the, as in the previous workflow. But in this case, you would set up the projection cameras and the geometry. So this would be um, quite close to what we're going to do. So an environment that is pretty heavily CG based. And uh, so you would do the modeling, the texturing, and you would paint over in Photoshop on top of those renders. And you would do the projections yourself inside of Nuke. And then once again, you would deliver either a Nuke script or an image sequence. So this is quite close to the workflow we're going to use, except that I added a few uh, things on top of it, which is going to bring me to the next workflow. So I called it the Gen workflow simply because it's sort of the same kind of workflow I used when I was at ILM in the Gen department. So Gen stands for generalist. I call it like this because it simply involves every possible technique or tool you could think of to make a shot happen, to make especially big establishing environment shots happen. So let's go quickly through it. So once again, you would receive a layout plus a camera, even though I should mention that in this course, this is something we'll have to do ourselves because we're doing everything from scratch. So we are not getting a shot cam. We have to animate it ourselves. But it's still a good thing to practice because it is still something that might happen um, every once in a while that you have to do the shot cam and the layout. So then you will do um, the whole environment basically using uh, a lot of 3D, so pretty advanced texturing, sculpting, modeling, rendering. Then you would paint over those renders and also do the projections. Now, the main thing that is different compared to the previous workflow is that this workflow would also involve, depending on the camera move, some CG animation. So really doing some proper 3D environment work and animate like a whole sequence and combining that with more traditional projected matte painting techniques.